Okay, so you never want to do this in algebra if you're trying to solve an equation. Now, of course, I'm going to show you what this thing is in just one second. But first, let's see if we can solve this basic equation. We have 7 over 13x is equal to 5 over 17. And uh, feel free to use a calculator. But if you could solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then I'm going to do this uh, problem. I'm going to solve this problem in two methods, okay, or two ways. The first way is going to be the correct way or the best way. And then the second way I'm going to do this is a very common approach that students take, which is not good. Okay, you do not want to do this. And of course, I'll show you what that thing is in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The answer to this equation, or the solution, is x is equal to 65 over 119. That is the best answer. All right, now if you have a decimal, we'll talk about that in a second, but if you have this answer, well, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic linear equations with fractions. Now, when you tell that to your family, it just sounds so impressive. They won't really know what you're talking about. They might say though, you know what? I think this person's gonna go far in life. Maybe I should take them out to lunch to get on their good side. All right, so all jokes aside, uh, if you didn't get this, but you did get a decimal, uh, you may not be far off, okay? Now you can quickly check, just take 65 divided by 119. And if your uh, answer is pretty close to that result, well then you were in the ballpark, okay? But there is a big problem here that I'm gonna show you what a lot of students do, but uh, let's go ahead and first talk about how to do this correctly. All right, so here's our equation. And the first thing I wanna uh, kind of highlight here is uh, these fractions are written with slanted fraction bars. There's nothing wrong, if you like, stylistically to write your fractions this way with slanted fraction bars, but that's kind of okay if you're like in basic math, arithmetic. If you're getting into algebra, you really want to uh, write your fractions with horizontal fraction bars like this. It's just um, a much easier and everything in algebra in terms of worth working with algebraic expressions are going to have nice horizontal fraction bars, especially when you're working with expressions like a rational expression, something like this. So just get in the habit uh, of uh, writing your fractions with these horizontal fraction bars. Okay, now when we're looking at an equation, what's the objective of an equation? Well, we wanna solve an equation. Let's take a look at a real easy example, like 2x is equal to 10. Okay, so 2x is 2 times a number x, a variable x. So if I uh, asked you 2 times what number is 10, you would say, well, 2 times what number is 10? Well, that number's got to be 5. You would be correct, right? So uh, if we're trying to solve this equation, and we already know what the answer is, how do we get 5? Well, what we're trying to do is get x by itself. Okay, x by itself on one side of the equation and one number on the other side, that number would uh, is going to be the solution. So here we have two times x. So what we can do to kind of undo multiplication is divide two by two. Okay, two divided by two is one or one x or just x. Okay, one x is x. But if I divide two on this side of the equation, I also have to divide two on this side of the equation. So 10 divided by two is five. So uh, x or one x is equal to five. All right, so that's just a quick basic example and if you think about it, this equation is effectively the same thing, right? We have a number in front of x is equal to another number. Now, some of you might be saying, well, uh, let's see here. Can I just simply divide both sides of the equation by 7 over 13? Uh, indeed, you can, okay? But that's kind of a messy way to do it. There's a far better way to solve equations with fractions. And let me just show you this right now. So, uh, again, the objective is to get x by itself on one side of the equation. Now, if I have this 7 over 13, what can I do to this number, this fraction, to get a 1? I want a 1x. I don't want a 7 over 13x. 
Well, what you can do is flip this fraction upside down. That's called the reciprocal and multiply it. Okay, so 13 over 7 times 7 over 13. If I multiply across like this, this is just 1. Okay, all these cross cancel. You're going to get the same uh, number in the numerator and the same number in the denominator. So you're going to get 1. And that's what I want. But here's the deal. In algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same operation to the other side. So over here, we need to multiply this side of the equation by 7 over, uh, or 13 over 7, excuse me. Okay, so this is right here what we need to do in order to get the solution. This is the best approach to deal with equations like this. So here is the answer. Okay, so we have 7 uh, over 13x is equal to 5 over 17. We're going to take the reciprocal of this fraction right there, 13 over 7, and multiply both sides of it. Now remember, I did say you can use your calculator, okay, because we're going to have to do some calculations here. So 5 times 13 is 65, and then 17 times 7 is 119. So this is the correct answer. All right, so um, again... If you have a decimal, we'll, uh, just hold that thought, and uh, we're going to get into that in just one second because this is going to be uh, really the main idea of this video. Okay, I'm going to be talking about decimals and what a lot of students do. But first, uh, I want to show you this, and there's two things I want to show you here. First of all, it's an invitation for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, right? So if you like my content, this is a great way to support my channel. Uh, I've been posting videos for 10 plus years. As a matter of fact, I have well over 2,000 math videos, basic math to advanced math and everything, which because I'm obsessed with teaching mathematics. But really, my obsession is to try to help people in math, okay? I'm really passionate about that. So I'm trying to find people that need help in mathematics or just interested in math, okay? And the best way for me to find these people is, is when you subscribe, it helps YouTube say, hey, you know what, maybe somebody likes this guy, uh, you know, the way he teaches. So that is a, a real big thing for me. So if you can do that, and if you're gonna do that, might as well hit that subscribe button as well. Okay, so I have a special offer here for you, and this particular offer I run uh, once in a blue moon, uh, once a year um, at the most, and this is a, a, a particularly different offer because uh, generally I run sales. Uh, they don't last too long, but this is by far the best sound. I really want to share it with my uh, subscribers and who, uh, anyone watching this video, even if you're not a subscriber. This is a great deal. So here it is. I'm offering 50% off all my main courses. This is my best work. Uh, Pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus. These are full curriculum, full-on courses, massive amounts of instruction. What I do on uh, YouTube is effectively like tutorial videos. Of course, I love to kind of be informal, but uh, that's pretty good. But if you really want to learn something, you got to get full and complete comprehensive instruction. Okay, And all these courses have taken me years and years to build. Uh, thousands and thousands of people have used them, so they're well um, vetted out for sure. But in them, you'll find all different sorts of things. You'll get um, complete instruction, tons of problems, um, worksheets, quizzes. You know, it's a whole nine yards. But if you're interested in taking advantage of this, uh, you got up until next Friday. Okay, well, I'm making this uh, video on Friday. So uh, in uh, November 10th, 2023, that Friday, this will expire at the end of the day. Okay, but if you want to learn from me, okay, this is my best work. And uh, anyways, uh, if you um, go to the description, you'll get the links to the courses with the coupon code and the detail. Okay. So anyways, hopefully some of you out there are like, wow, I've been waiting for, you know, maybe to find a good sale because, hey, I get it. Uh, but this is really, you know, comprehensive instruction. Matter of fact, to go through all these courses, you would need uh, more than a few years. All right. So let's go ahead and, and get to what I am talking about. What is the worst way? What is something that you never want to do in algebra? Well, this is it. Uh, and uh, this is really typical of students who do not like fractions. And I get it. They're like, oh, my goodness, I'm looking at fractions. I don't want to deal with fractions. You know, um, and, and I was the same way, I'm sure, back in school. So here is what a ton of students do, okay, and which is actually not uh, – it's not a bad strategy. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense to me why they would do it. They have their calculator. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my calculator here, and I'm just going to change these fractions to decimals. Now, some calculators um, 
Matter of fact, a lot of the modern calculators, like uh, scientific calculators, like the TI-30, I want to say, well, there's a ton of them. You can switch from decimals to fractions, and that's fine because, you know, if you're like, well, you can actually uh, use uh, fractions in your calculator, but a lot of students don't even realize that. So what they'll do is they'll go, all right, 7 divided by 13, they just start turning these things into decimals. So 7 divided by 13 is going to be the decimal 0.5384615. Well, this goes on and on and on and on. Okay, uh, 5 over 17, if you turn that into a decimal, you're going to get 0.29411764. So what students would do, again, they'll change their fractions into decimals, and then they will kind of just round off. They'll be like, all right, let me see here. I'm not definitely not using all of this. So maybe I'll just uh, take the first three decimals here and the first three decimals here. Uh, place values, right, 0.538. X is equal to uh, 0.294. Now... This is not a bad strategy, but it's something that you don't want to do because what's going on here is now you're estimating, okay? You're going to have an, an estimate as your solution, okay? Whereas the actual answer, uh, 65 over 119, I believe it is, that is the precise 100% correct answer, okay? It's not an estimate. It's an exact answer. And you don't want to start messing around, uh, you know, unless you're taking like a science course or something like that where uh, the teacher may not really care too much about the mathematics of, you know, you're, they're only looking for a decent approximation. But you don't want to do it this way because obviously it's pretty easy to solve these equations with fractions. But let's go ahead and just uh, finish this e equation out with these decimal estimates. So if I have 0.538x is equal to 0.294, uh, so to divide or to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 0.538. So we got two nine, uh, 0.294 divided by 0.538. Again, I did say you can use your calculator. And when you do this, you're going to get another decimal, uh, and it's going to go uh, pretty far, 0.5464, on and on, on, on and on and on, excuse me. <laughs> so let's see how this compares to the actual answer. So the actual answer is 65 over, one, over 119. Now, if you take 65 and divide it by 119, you're going to get a decimal, 0.54621, on and on and on and on. Now, if you take a look at this estimate, it may not seem to be too bad. You got uh, 0.5464. Here you have 62. Okay. Now, some of you might say, well, this doesn't seem to be too bad. You know, they seem pretty close, and they are reasonably close, but it's something that you do not want to do because in algebra and in mathematics, you're going to, um, uh, at least from a math teacher standpoint, they want to see the exact solution, okay, the exact solution to uh, an equation or, you know, some sort of problem. Uh, they do not want to see you doing this, okay? So if you do this, your teacher is going to basically say, oh, they don't know how to solve equations with fractions, all right? So it's, a, it's something that you want to stay away from. Now, if you are in a, let's say, um, let's say you forgot, you're, and this is some sort of test or something like that, and you totally forgot. You're like, oh my gosh, I forgot what that YouTube math man told me about solving equations with fractions. Now, if you got your, and you can use a calculator and you did this, you know, that's logical and it's better than nothing. Okay. As a matter of fact, you'll get, you can get a reasonable answer. But again, the main idea here is that you do not want to use that as a primary technique or method to solve equations with fractions. All right, now I wouldn't bring this up unless I've seen like, I don't know, how many students have I've seen make this mistake? Well, maybe not this many, but you know, when you've been grading uh, tests, quizzes, homework, uh, you know, I've been doing this for decades and decades, I've seen all the mistakes and I've made all the mistakes, okay? So this is a common uh, kind of um, uh, thing that, st uh, that students do. And if you've been doing it, you know, don't get down on yourself, you know, at least now you, you're, you're aware, okay? Hopefully your math teacher has made you aware of that as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.